Hi, I'm Matt Needham, and this is my lecture on basic electric motors. Let's start here with the first slide, introduction to electric motors, and we're using uh, electric energy to create mechanical movement, to move things like fans, pumps, um, and compressors, and the torque is the strength of the motor. We have like, usually, the torque, the strength of the motor, um, and also the speed of the motor. It's almost like uh, I used to have a dog who was a little mini pincher. It's really quick, fast dog, very, you know, high speed, a two-pole dog, if you like. And then a coyote ate it. So then I'm thinking, let me get a dog, because I live in coyote country, that can eat a coyote. Got Nikita. Not the fastest dog, but a really strong dog, a lot of torque, can pull a heavy amount of weight, a lot of horsepower, if you like, or dog power. Um, and so that's kind of the difference, and that would be more like a eight-pole motor, which we can read about later. Magnetism. We're not just talking about my personality now. We're talking about creating magnets. We're talking about... Um, when you're a kid and you play with magnets, you get two norths, they push, and if you get a north and a south, they pull. And that's really how motors work, is it's just magnets pushing each other around. A north pushing a north and pulling to a south, and then the magnetic field changes and the motor keeps rotating. Okay. Even the earth, is mentioned here, is really a giant uh, mag magnet full of liquid iron in the center of the earth and it's spinning and we have a north and a south pole that can even cause the hand of a compass to point to magnetic north. Now we have permanent magnets that we can magnify. They're not permanent but they can hold uh, your refrigerator magnet, if you leave it on your refrigerator for 40 years, guess what? It'll fall off. It'll lose its magnetism over time. But in a sense, that's a permanent magnet. But um, electromagnet is where we wrap uh, a wire around an iron core, and when it's electrified, it becomes a temporary magnet, um, electromagnet, which we can um, utilize to move other magnets around. And here's the explanation for that on the PowerPoint. And again, we always have to have electrons flowing through a conductor to create this uh, magnetic field. Now, we're using, we need continuous rotation. We need these magnets to keep moving each other around so we can make use of the motion to turn fans, compressors, pumps, etc. Um, not, not one type of motor can be used for all applications. You might think, well, I have this half horsepower evaporator fan. Let me see if I can somehow make it work for the condenser fan. But it's not designed to work in such hot conditions or in such wet or dirty conditions. So it's, it's not going to work for you. So motors have to be designed for the right application, even if you think you have the horsepower and the speed and the voltage correct. Okay. Now we're going to talk about different types of motors. Simplest motors from like a little bathroom exhaust like a shaded pole motor all the way up to three phase and electrically commutated motors and this is a little preview slide. Let's get more into the specifics. So two pole motors I'm not going to beat you up on the math right now. I'll wait till we're back in person and then I'll beat you up on the math. Uh, <laughs> um, two pole motors run around 3450 RPM. Mathematically, it's 3600 RPM, um, but there's a little slippage. It's not a perfect machine. So 3450, that would be my um, mini pincher. Very quick, but you know, some little shade of pole motors, if I held it with a glove, it wouldn't be able to start and overcome my grip. But a four or six pole motor would break my wrist. Maybe it wouldn't go as fast, but it could break my wrist just like my Akita can. 
That's why I made a harness for when I walk it. Okay. Um, and again, those four pole uh, motors run at around 1750 RPM, which is a very common RPM in the air conditioning refrigeration industry. Okay. You have open motors that allow the ambient air usually to go in through the windings and relieve heat. And then sometimes you have enclosed motors, which are really what refrigeration air conditioning hermetic compressors are. The compressors that pump the refrigerant around the system, there's a motor in there also encased in refrigerant atmosphere. It's not open to the atmosphere. It's encased in the refrigeration um, system and it's completely sealed. It's hermetically sealed from the outside. Okay, So we deal with both um, types of motors. So learning about the windings of the motor uh, and the bearings and etc. is very important. Okay, and NEMA, the National Electrical Manufacturers Association, they set standards for motors like the frame size, um, the horsepower, um, things like this, the voltage, uh, amperage, etc. Okay, now a shaded pole um, motor is a very simple motor and it runs with just one winding. Just one run winding. It doesn't even have a start winding. And bathroom exhausts, little baby condenser fans for small refrigeration units, maybe some window units, evaporator fans, small fans, little exhaust fans, things of this nature. Shaded pole, inexpensive motor. Um, sometimes they can be disassembled and mechanically put back the other way to get them to turn in the opposite um, rotation and there's not a lot of motor protection for these like overloads and things because they're so inexpensive they don't spend the money they're like well just get another motor if it fails okay. now capacitors they kind of give the motor a boost a we'll talk about this a run capacitors in the circuit the entire time the motor is energized and it's taking a charge and giving a charge and um, it helps the motor run more efficiently Okay, and then the start capacitor is on some systems. It just works for a second, literally a second. It's just boom, a big boost, and it gives the motor a kick to kind of get going. And the start capacitor is always taken out of the circuit once it does its job, without exception. It's only working for a second or maybe a second and a half at the most. And we do have these microfarad checkers and capacitors are rated microfarads and on your electrical electric meters you can have check the strength of the microfarads compared to what uh, it says printed on the outside of the capacitor gives you a microfarad rating. Okay. Now split phase motors, we're talking about single phase motors here where the power comes in and then it splits like this to go through a run winding and uh, a start winding, okay? And we're gonna talk about resistance start, induction run motors and capacitor start induction run motors in a second here, okay? So these are single phase motors that have a start and a run winding. Now resistance start induction run motors, um, basically they're not utilizing a capacitor. Um, they're just using the start winding to help it start and then they take the start winding out of the circuit and then it just runs on the run winding a lot like the shaded pole motor does. Um, <clears throat> and a lot of times they're taken out of the circuit with a centrifugal switch, although it's not mentioned here, can also be taken out of the circuit with a current relay. Okay, Capacitor start induction run motors. That's where you will have a capacitor that really helps start it. And we see this mostly in refrigeration compressors because when refrigeration compressors are off and the box is down to temperature, the evaporator is very cold, the pressure on the low side is still low, and the pressure on the high side is relatively high. And it has to overcome that pressure, and the start capacitor helps it overcome that pressure to get started. So we use the start capacitor to get it going. Okay. Then we have a permanent split capacitor motor that uses a 
run capacitor, okay? And the run capacitor, it's in the circuit the entire time the motor runs. It actually also helps a little bit in starting the motor and it stays and is very loyal to the motor and it stays in the circuit the entire time and helps the motor um, run. And it's, you, it's because it's bigger in size because it has to be in the circuit the whole time. It has a metal casing and oil inside to dissipate the heat because all that electrical energy acting upon it creates heat and has to dissipate that heat. We can have a very strong start capacitor with a much higher fight microfarad rating than the run and it doesn't need metal and oil because it has 30 minutes to cool down because it's only it doesn't even get hot it's only working for a second or two okay um and also remember this when the only time the start winding stays in the circuit the entire time for any motor application is if you have a run capacitor if you have a run capacitor the start winding is energized throughout the entire operation of the motor. If you don't have a run capacitor, then the start winding is taken out of the circuit. Now motors can fail electrically, the windings burning open, going to ground, being shorted, etc. Or they can also fail mechanically where the bearings seize or something breaks inside the motor physically. Here we have capacitor start, capacitor run motors. That's where you're, you're going to utilize both a run capacitor and a start capacitor. And then after a second or two, you're going to take the start cap out and just use the run capacitor. And actually for that first moment of starting, the capacitance of the two add up together to give it an even more starting torque. And then you drop out the um, start capacitor and you just run with the run capacitor again. This is used primarily in refrigeration air, compress uh, air conditioning compressors. You might find it on some designs on small air conditioning systems. Okay. Now, three-phase motors. This is not like small motors. There's no such thing as uh, a tiny three-phase motor. Um, uh, three phase is for large buildings, large applications, commercial industrial um, applications. Um, and they have three windings and they utilize no capacitors whatsoever because you have three power sources. It's like pew, 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 and that makes it run very efficiently and has good starting torque, etc. The only exception to what I just said is that there are some like ductless mini split systems out there now where like the compressor they act is actually three phase and they run on a variable frequency drive and they actually can now take like 230 volts single phase and convert it into three phase and run a three phase variable frequency drive motor but that's a story for another day but that's the new technology um, and an exception here to our rule. But normally three-phase motors, just commercial industrial applications, you're not gonna find three-phase power on someone's home. If you do, it should have been on the old show Cribs because that's a big ass mansion. Electrically commutated motors. Now, these are smaller motors um, that run with single phase and they're very efficient and they use less amperage to run, which is what they're all about. Now, do they last as long as the more as their simpler fathers? Maybe not. The, the, in my mind, the jury is still out on that. They're quite expensive, and a lot of times they can be designed to speed up or slow down, but not in every application. So there is such a thing as a single speed electric, electrically commutated motor, and the reason it exists because it runs and does a lot of work for very little electricity, electrical use, okay? Then again, we have our hermetic compressor motors, which is um, air conditioning refrigeration compressors. And pretty much nowadays, all air conditioning refrigeration compressors are hermetically sealed, where the windings are inside, uh, they're surrounded in a vaporous refrigerant atmosphere, and this, Hermetic motors can be from a very small rotary compressor, like just this big that runs your refrigerator, to a giant 
three-phase centrifugal compressor um, like this, but they're all still hermetically sealed in a sense, and the windings are inside. Okay. Now, here's something. On single phase, you have a common, a run, and a start terminal. You have a run winding, you have a start winding on single phase on any motor. Three phase, we do not have a common, a start, and a run. Uh, we do not have just a run winding and a start winding. We have three windings that are all of equal resistance. <sighs> Making sure that motors are operating uh, good. You know, it might be a good policy on very large motors, pumps and fans and whatnot, maybe to keep a log where when the ambient temperature is a certain thing, you can take an infrared temperature gun and take the temperature of that. One moment, I think I have one here. Well, due to COVID-19, I think I put it in my bedroom in case uh, I got sick, I could easily take my temperature so it's not where I left it. Um, so let's get finish up the lecture. Um, I didn't get sick. So you wanna use um, service call protocols. You want to be able to um, see if a motor is running hot, if it's making noise, if it's vibrating, check the electrical connections to be there, make sure they're tight, they're not um, dirty or corroded. Um, taking the amperage on the motor, make sure it's not exceeding the full load amps, it has the proper, proper voltage supply, uh, etc. And that concludes my lecture on basic electric motors.